Oh, for this, like. Uh, Good afternoon and welcome to the National Urban League Digital Career Success Series brought to you by the Urban League's Job Network. I am Jody Brockington. Most of you guys don't get to usually see me, um, so welcome. And today we are celebrating trailblazers. I hope you all have been watching the National Urban League and the Urban League Job Network Twitter feed, Facebook feed, LinkedIn feed. Um, we've been featuring all different African American trailblazers at different levels of their career. And today I wanted to bring you someone who is still young, but such a trailblazer because he's worked in every sector, but also has been successful every step he's taken. So I wanted to make sure that you got a little bit of insight of what each sector is like and what it will take you to be a trailblazer. I met Cassius F. Butts many years ago um, in Atlanta, his home city, while I was working on a project for Operation Hope called the Global Financial Dignity Summit. I was uh, fortunate enough to meet him uh, because he was one of our speakers and at the time was with the SBA. Uh, since then, we have stayed in touch. I've seen his career change and he's now working for himself and I'm happy to just have him in my FOJ, Friends of Jody Network, to call on from time to time. I last saw him at the National MBA Conference in Philadelphia, of which he is on the chair of the board, so uh, good shoulders to rub. And I told him I wanted him to participate in this Digital Career Success Series. He said yes, but yeah, I don't think he really thought I was gonna ask him, but I did, <laughs> and he's here today. So I traveled back from DC at the uh, Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program to be here this morning and then now this afternoon. So I'd like to introduce Cassius and let him tell you a little bit more about himself. But before he does, we're gonna show a short video which will give you a snippet into his life, uh, how he kind of began, and then he'll go a little bit, a little bit more into detail, and then tell you how you can maybe be like him one day. So, video, please. Oh yeah. Well, it is, every time I see that Jody, I, I sit back and think, who is that guy? Uh, <laughs> it, it is uh, is um, is a blessing, and I'm very fortunate to be in the position to help. Uh, those who are looking to realize their entrepreneurial dreams, uh, not just in the place where someone who started off, but even those seasoned uh, small business uh, executives or just people who are trying to figure out, you know, what is their passion? And we just try to find a way to, to turn that into something uh, that they may have difficulty figuring out what that is. And so it's like, what do we do? You know, we actually help folks with small business efforts, particularly with access to capital. Uh, if you're looking to start grow your business, uh, we try to get the funds for you to grow and start your business. Um, certification, if you're looking to be certified as a minority business enterprise or a women business enterprise entity uh, or a veteran, uh, we help to get you on the right track so you can receive that certification. Um, and so it's something that I'm very proud of. Um, uh, started this company many moons ago, took a seat back, uh, and actually when I left the administration, I had a wonderful opportunity to come in and join uh, the Georgia State University J. Mack College of Business uh, to serve as their executive in residence. And so it's been a wonderful opportunity being in this place and being in these roles uh, and have a great team who actually runs the day-to-day -day, uh, for CFB Advisors, Capital Quarter 2 Business Advisors, and, and I'm, we're very, very proud of it. Um, just to talk a little bit about where we are now, uh, Tyra Pacey, she is president of, of the firm Tyra. Uh, is someone who spent many years in corporate America. Uh, she uh, has a particular interest uh, or background in supply chain management. In fact, she has a, uh, a PhD in this. Uh, she has worked, okay. yes, uh, she's worked in areas of uh, with companies such as Coca-Cola, SunTrust, Atlanta Housing Authority, 
uh, really to help in, into the whole area of procurement and making sure that supply management uh, opportunities are available for small and large businesses. And so she runs the day-to-day -day operations now. Uh, Daniel Blackman, uh, who is in Atlanta as well too, uh, is, uh, has a specific interest uh, tailored around um, clean air. Uh, and, and I mean by clean air, really sustainability. Uh, he's worked, he worked on the Obama uh, Clean Air Initiative, uh, the campaign also Power Africa Initiative. Uh, Daniel is someone who's been in a, a place of always looking to try to make things happen uh, uh, where the environment has an impact on communities as a whole. And so he's that advocate. Uh, very proud of a lot of what Daniel has, has accomplished. We've known each other for a number of years. He's a graduate of Clark Atlanta University. Uh, and so Daniel, is, is he's a, another trendsetter who uh, we're very proud to be a, a part of our team. Marty, Marty is, uh, is, is <laughs> I'd say, he is someone who is, has a lot of institutional knowledge about startups. Uh, person who's acquired a BA in economics, Borden School of Business, have helped many startups to really accomplish their, their entrepreneurial dreams. And Marty is our advisor in helping a lot of folks with startups specifically, and uh, particularly around the areas of innovation and, and technology. Uh, Lynthia Ross, uh, who is in Augusta, uh, she is uh, a person who has a lot of the uh, government affairs initiative. She actually was former chief of staff uh, to Mayor Hardy Davis, uh, worked for Congressman Barrows, uh, and is someone who has really kind of taken the, the lead on making sure that government affairs has its tie-in to corporate America. And so very proud of Lynthia, and we're expecting to do a lot of great things this year coming up as well, too. Sure. So I was going to ask just in terms of, you know, how did you, you put this team together? They all sound like they could be working for themselves, too, just sure. like you. Um, you know, mini trailblazers. But you've gone through schools and stuff and degrees and sectors. So, you know, did you, was this a vision, a plan for you? Did someone kind of set you on this pathway? We all say we need a mentor, a sponsor, a sure. this. So, you know, kind of. Get us to how you got here. So, you know, over the years, I always had this mindset, um, have to make sure that you, you realize that very seldom you have a second opportunity to make a first impression. And so the folks who are part of, of the, the leadership team uh, I've met over the years. Um, whenever good synergies come to place, you find a way to grab hold of them and make certain that you find out how you can contribute what you have to offer to their daily walk. And I think at some point in time over the years, we've all found a way uh, to interact and make sure that we're supportive of our respective endeavors. Um, you know, when you talk about being a trailblazer, for me, it's it's something that did happen uh, organically. Um, originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, finished high school in Orlando, Florida, uh, came off of college in, in Atlanta, uh, and wanted to be in a place where I just want to make a difference in, in folks' lives. I come from a family of entrepreneurs. Uh, my late father was an aerospace engineer. Uh, my mother was an owner of family-owned business. Uh, so I saw, you know, them really working at their craft at an early age, along with my brother. And, you know, now we're, we're kind of saying, okay, what do we want to do with ourselves? And so you find people who inspire you along the way. And uh, then my mentor, uh, the late three-time mayor of the city of Atlanta, Maynard Jackson, you know, saw something in me that I may, may not have solved myself at that time and told me I was going to do great things. And so uh, I re remain obedient to it. Uh, and worked in corporate America starting off and uh, really had a good time there, but wasn't really enjoying myself. And so I had to go back to follow my passion. I was actually attending law school, grad school, and seminary school okay. at the same time. <laughs> These were initiatives and things that I wanted to do and decided that graduate school was uh, the most important thing for me to do. So um, I wanted to make certain that, you know, we had a company that, that you, you follow your passion. Um, spent many years in corporate America, came back, served in the Bush administration as a fellow uh, and as a presidential management fellow at U.S. Department of, of Housing and Urban Development and uh, off to SBA, as you, as you have seen. Um, now working in a place of where helping entrepreneurs realize their dreams. You know, we, our, our mission is really just to make sure that uh, you have uh, an opportunity to develop relationships over the years use those relationships into really figuring out what you want to do as far as getting your message out with regard to communication and really identify other businesses that you may have the same uh, path, but also businesses that you may not have the same path. And that's where really partnership and opportunities kind of come to its apex. Um, yes. so trying yes. to be innovative 
within multiple sectors. Right? Absolutely. So government sees something one way, um, corporate America sees it another. You're here today at the National Urban League, which is actually a nonprofit, but somehow they all kind of come to this trifecta. So you're trying to make sure that you maximize with your new business that everyone kind of gets access to all of this. Certainly, certainly. And I, and I actually want to, to pause. I'll be remiss if I, I did not acknowledge the efforts of Mr. Mark Morial and the leadership here uh, in New York City. I'm glad to be here today. Uh, and I know that the difference of what the National Urban League has uh, made an impact in my life growing up and what it's continued to do uh, uh, with communities, communities across the country. And so really hats off to uh, to this organization. Um, and, and, and really for, for what you're establishing here, being a trailblazer means something that you're just, you're that leadership within your own right. And I believe that every person is a superhero. I've always had this thing with so people are superhero. You have a letter on your chest, which is your name. And so you have to figure out what your power is. And so you talk about being a trailblazer. Let's look at it. It's really following your passion. You're, and I always have this mindset. Again, your passion is your purpose. And your purpose is, is really your, your plan. But in this case, your purpose is your brain. And you figure out, hey, my purpose is really figure out what you know, am I good at? Can I make a profit off of that? And, and that's what it really is. And so whether it's um, information to, uh, uh, technology or if it's in uh, real estate or if it's in um, um, lawn care services, uh, and you name it. If you think about every business within in this world, the United States in particular, uh, they, you see the larger companies, the targets of all the markets of the world, but there are small businesses that actually support those larger businesses. And so we help you to figure out what that is. And I think being a trailblazer, is what I actually enjoy doing is helping other folks to, to figure out what that is. But I would think that the SBA really gave you a big platform to see small businesses at all shapes, sizes, startups, oh, absolutely. end of career, kind of going CDFI funds. I mean, everything that everyone's trying to get at. So I absolutely. think what you're, I mean, that's why today I thought it was so important for this message because of where you have sat yes, and sorry. where you're sitting there. The SBA did give me the great uh, continuation uh, my family gave me the first start, you know, uh -huh. looking at my family, uh, they, they put me, uh, my brother and I to work. And so it goes back to something about uh, investing in your dreams. I mean, and also when you do that, you invest in someone else's dreams. Um, you know, along the way, you know, we were able to, my brother and I were able to help other folks to figure out what they wanted to be when they grew up, whether it was starting a business or someone who was uh, a car wash business or a fruit stand business, all which we have worked for at some point in time. But also uh, folks who are running for elective office, and I would tell folks uh, many times, hey, if, you know, if you believe you want to see change in your communities, support someone who's running for office, no matter what the pol political affiliation. That's your, you know. Yeah, you but as long as you believe that's what it is, you should volunteer those efforts. And if you do that, you'll find out that you actually get more out of it uh, in the end than what you're putting into it. And, you, and so I believe that that kind of uh, uh, action really serves itself. And uh, for me. I've seen it happen time and time again, um, and there are folks who I believe are, are still doing it to this day that you continue to have to do that and invest into their dreams. Um, you know, we talked about Candace, uh, campaign for Candace that you believe in, whoever it is. Keep doing it, no matter no, no matter what the cause is. Don't worry about what someone may say about, hey, why are you supporting this candidate or that candidate? But if it's something that you believe in, it's something that you're supportive of, find a way to support that, uh, that, that individual. Um, I think that, you know, really having uh, a mentor is huge. And you hear this time and time again. Uh, I've had mentors over the years, as I mentioned, Amir Jackson, uh, Dr. Lewis Lynn, who's a mentor of mine, who's actually on the board of trustees here at the National Urban League, is, is a dear mentor. Uh, I think it's someone who can really kind of tell you about yourself when you need to hear about yourself, because we all have an ego. But we have to find ways of putting our ego to the side and seeing the big picture. Uh, and that's something I'm very proud of. You folks like Dr. Bill Picard, uh, who has made tremendous accolades in the business world as someone who I'm fond of and think very huge of. Uh, and, and I think that when you do that, you got to figure out ways to uh, support against someone else's dreams. And so uh, I've mentored mentors who I mentor uh, in, uh, in Georgia and across the country, one particularly Eldridge Washington in Atlanta, who's doing a lot of phenomenal things of helping people to realize how to spend money in respective communities, but also how to raise money. Uh, he started a new online platform, which is huge. It's phenomenal. And I'm very proud of what he's accomplishing. So you got to take those risks. Talk about mentors. Um, and not for them to be just in your same circle, right? You have absolutely. Some, all, from all different walks of life, which is also why you've been able to put together this group of people. Yeah. Kind of take them as you go and meet new ones and 
next gen. So I think Jody, the important. one thing that I do know is that I, I don't know everything. Um, but I, I'm <laughs> humble enough to know to say, to put my ego to the side and say, I want someone else to help me to get to this next place in some kind of way. I'm going to help them along the way. But when you realize that, you have to take those risks and you have to say, hey, I want to get to the next level. Being a trailblazer means that, you know, what, you, you may fail, but when you fail, you actually gain wisdom. And so uh, I believe by putting your faith in everything that you do, just for me, whatever your faith is, believing in yourself uh, is really the best thing that you can actually do. And I think you uncovered the biggest thing that most people think of trailblazers as someone who's just out there by themselves, no help, no anything. And it's really the people who are more most comfortable asking right. for help or right. saying, I don't know something versus the person who says, I know everything. Yeah. You might, I'm turning to you today because I'm always like, you know everything, <laughs> but it's because you have the people around you to help you. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we're talking about one of the last things is really surround yourself with a, di a diverse perspective. And, you know, I, and I'm huge on, you know, whether it's folks that look like you or don't look like you, we're all human beings. And we're, we're in a place where we can learn from each other. We're in a place where we can give what we have to offer to someone else's uh, endeavors. And, uh, you, you know, when you, when you mix that with, with uh, a little bit of humility, uh, self-determination, and believing in yourself and putting your faith in everything that you do, that's really how you become to a place of the National Urban League or other organizations across the country and say, I want to be a part of by helping their bottom line, volunteering. And that's really how you become a trailblazer. Uh, it really is just that simple. There's no secret sauce. And the secret is, is really just realizing the best that you have in yourself, and giving that best to somebody else. Okay. So this, this is, um, you know, the part that I, I still kind of just get a little choked up and thinking about, because it's not necessarily about what I have done as a trailblazer, but it's been, it's been about uh, what my family has done, uh, the folks along the way have done. Um, um, even working as an executive residence at the College of Business at Georgia State, helping persons to realize their next place in life uh, and pursuing that education or pursuing that passion. Um, all this is going to uh, my book, uh, The Exception uh, Rules. And so I love the title. Yeah. Exception to the Rules <laughs> is, you know, I, 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 I laugh because I'm looking at it and it's really, it's just really about a journey. And it's the journey really is outlining helping millennials to seasoned professionals really to figure out their purpose and really turning that purpose into something that I kind of figure out. And my dear old alma mater, Morehouse College, taught me about self actualization. Um, had taking humanistic uh, experiences um, and, and putting faith into it, you will achieve your dreams. And so uh, this book is really talking about you as an individual of helping to go through those life uh, learning experiences and mixing them in with just your desire to want to achieve whatever, whatever it is you're setting your heart out to be. Uh, but of course, I'm starting with the entrepreneurs because that's where I come from. That's where my family uh, kind of bore that into my brother and I. Um, but at the same time, you figure that even folks in corporate America are people who are in the entertainment, uh, 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 sports enthusiasts, and across the board, everyone can kind of take something from this and say, you know what, I know who that person is because of that, that was me at one point in time. Self-doubt comes in, who you're surrounding yourself with. And you have to continue to realize that there are people who can actually do something as simple as saying, hey, you know, your passion is your purpose and your purpose is your plan. That's my model. Um, accepting to the rules is really just uh, kind of a, an, an entire rendition about being that exception to whatever the rule is. You can be that, that trendsetter, trendsetter, that trailblazer, and uh, it's not that difficult to do. Just take it easy. Yeah, just take it easy. Just take it easy. Take and I, risk. But I think that's the challenge these days that everyone wants everything so quick, right? It's, yes. Or it's a me, me, me. Even, you know, we have everything on our phone, everything popping up, you know, right. something happening, technology changing so quickly, you know, people trying to just stay ahead or stay on, on point is hard enough. So when you are a trailblazer, you know, are you looking so far down the future or mm -hmm. are you really focused on, you know, one thing at a time, you know, so you have to kind of figure out that balance, and it right. seems like you've done a pretty good job of that. I, I just try to think about, um, you know, I've had some um, life uh, experiences, some that were not so favorable, sure. and um, I failed many, many times. Um, I, I've realized that something that was consistent. I never stopped believing in myself, and um, you know, again, I have to credit my mother and my father and my family. For that, but also um, 
decisions. My mother would often tell me that, you know, it's not just about what you do, but it's the decisions that you make. And if you can continue to make pretty good decisions, you know, consistently, um, you, you'll be in a much better place. And so uh, I'm just glad to have good people uh, uh, that I've decided to have a part of my life. You know, when you look at this professional sense of what does it mean to be this trailblazer um, and learn from them. And so, you know, here we are today uh, here in New York uh, and looking to help me hopefully inspire some, some people out there in, in the cyber world. So I do have a, a question, and I'll sure. kick off questions and then take those that have come in. Um, you know, you talked about mentors, but who's someone that you haven't met yet that you would love to sit down with and just have co whatever your coffee, your smoothie, <coughs> whatever your, your little uh, break of choice, but just pick their brain, something that they might be able to add to your, to your journey. Um, someone who I have not met yet. And... You know, um, there's many people who I can probably say people I have not met. But that um, one, that if you're like, I met her or him, this is it. It's going to take me to this next <laughs> It's going to take you to the next place. I mean, it could uh, just make you happy, make your hair curlier, uh, but just someone you'd like to sit down with. I, I, I probably say um, if it's someone who I have not met yet, that could probably make, uh, give me guidance or uh, make a difference in next world. I've met him briefly. Uh, years ago, um, but then did not get a chance to sit and have a further discussion with them is uh, Colin Powell. Okay. Um, I think that seeing someone come from a, a background where you were not expect expected to to be successful and to find ways of navigating through this world to the next level in life, um, I would say Colin Powell. And um, the irony is his nephew, um, um, Colin, and I went to Morehouse together, okay. uh, but did not get a chance to actually sit and be with him. Gotcha. No, I, I always feel like, you know, I think that's a, I didn't even think about him on my list, but just where he sits and has sat in powerful positions, leader, but also kind of that sand in the oyster, in the oyster and just um, would be an interesting conversation, so I'd like to be on the, the wall for that. <laughs> sure. um, folks are interested in how did you end up in government? Of oh, all, wow. Like, you know, I, I joke that it, it doesn't seem to be as sexy anymore, just like the financial industry and other things, but, you know, really seem to have given you some grounding and also perspective that a lot of us don't have because sure. we haven't had that experience when you said, you know, vote, you know, work on someone's campaign. Yeah. I've done that, but I never ended up on the Hill. So, you know, and, and SBA, like, you know, what drew, was it people that drew you there or was it the experience? I think it probably was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my, first of my interest, okay. uh, interest in government. I'm always interested in, excuse me, yeah. how society operates. Uh, and I was always interested as, as a kid. But I, I would say that, um, you know, if you want to get in, uh, involved in, in government, you know, you have to go back to some simple things. For every person wherever you live, you should find out who your elected officials are. You should find out who your state representative is. You should find out who your council person is. You should find out who your uh, governor and lieutenant governor is. You should find out who your senator is and your congresswoman. If you do these things, you will find out that more about those persons that may have some similar interests in what you have. And all the uh, persons who I just mentioned have district offices in your specific community. Yeah. And, and, and guess what? The best part about it is uh, there are free offices, which means you can go in and ask about, you know, what happens on a day-to-day -day basis. What does it mean to be uh, with the new tax laws? What does it mean to have um, uh, pavement, paved roads? And, and in the process, that you can actually sit and have a dialogue with your elected officials whenever you want. Um, and so when you say how, I would definitely tell persons to start with your elected officials in your, in your respective community. And um, if you go online, you can look them all up no matter where you are in the country. And they all have offices where they're uh, within your respective area. You can come sit in, have dialogue, and ask different questions about whatever it is you're interested in. So I would definitely say starting there. And then here's the thing about it, Jody. If you find out you like that person, no matter who they are, may decide to run for re-election or there's someone else coming volunteer. Take your time to figure out, hey, if this is someone who has values that are similar to mine I'm interested in, 
find a way to support that person. This is what, what this is the democracy that we live in. We definitely should take more and more advantage of it than, than we have in the past. And then the other question is kind of why, how did you end up going government instead of doing entrepreneur straight out the, like nowadays everyone should just have their own job, be their own CEO. Sure. Um, and you had that kind of, like you saw that at home where a lot of other folks don't see that at home. Right. Um, you know, did they encourage you to first, you know, <laughs> build a brand and, you know, get some skills someplace else? Or, you know, were you just not sure what you wanted? Like, you know, why job <clears throat> first and not just start your own, you know? So, I, I, again, my, uh, my grandfather, he owned his own construction company. Um, my other grandfather was uh, uh, one of the first African-Americans with department heads for the city of Orlando. He actually ran for mayor uh, in Orlando, Fred Buggs. Uh, my grandfather in Philadelphia was uh, Daniel Beeks. Uh, and um, I, I, get, I got to solve this at an early age, what it really meant to be in government and entrepreneur. So, uh, yeah, and for me, I'm a huge history buff. And okay. so when I saw uh, and I learned about the Great Depression, um, I learned what happened. Actually, you know, th this country went into a downward spiral, and people had to rely on their talents to make ends meet. And I read about this as a kid, and I thought that I'd never want to be in that uh, position. I'd never want to rely on a company to say, this is how I'm going to feed my family. And so as a kid, I always said, and I saw my family say, you know what, you have a talent, no matter what it is, you should, should find a way to, uh, to benefit and to profit from your own talent first before giving it to someone else. So what would you say now to someone who's, you know, even a teenager all the way, you know, who does have some entrepreneurial drive, sure. you know, how should they start, where should they look? What should they do? Well, you know, a shameless plug. They should start with their local National Urban League office. <laughs> uh, shameless plug. But uh, really, it, it starts with places like that. When you try to figure out what your passion is, I mean, these kids today, they have so much, they're so, much, they're so talented. And a lot of them just need a direction and places to where they can kind of let all that talent out uh, into whatever it is they're interested in. You know, and so if you a person says, hey, I want to, I want to build, 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 build buildings. Well, let's show you how to be an architect. A person said, hey, I'm interested in, in how to be healthy. Well, let's talk about being a physician. Well, let's talk about being a nurse. Or, or let's talk, talk about being a nurse practitioner. Uh, or if a person says, hey, you know what? I'm interested in cars. I like to, I like to build cars. Okay, great. Let's talk about having you to have your own shop. Let's talk about how, having you to be a, an auto dealer. And so sometimes, a lot of times, people have an idea of what they want. They just want to figure out how to, to refine it. And that's where entities such as the National Urban League or entities such as um, um, your local government office have outreach coordinators that can help you to show you how to do these different things. And so, you know, I have to go back to government because, you know, you pay for it through your taxes. This is what right. your taxes are used for. You should, hey, you should take advantage of it. No, take advantage of it. And then what about that next uh what about our millennials? There's a lot of folks that are in work now. That's what they were saying. And, yes. you know, that we all kind of have, we joke about the side hustle. Yes. Um, but how do you make the side hustle real? You know, yes, you need a ch check to kind of go, but when do you know it's time to go, let go of the training wheels and really fly? So you've now done the architect thing. You've yes. done, like, you know, you're in, you've worked for a firm, an architect firm, and you've been designing stuff, but you know that your boss taking like when when do you let go and say like I can I can do this like at what point like and not and not yeah. that there's an exact thing, but what what are some signs that you're ready? You know, this is when you become the exception to the rule. Okay. This is when you actually go back to say, this is my time. You feel it. You know it. It's not when your boss is just coming down you and you're being mad and you say I want to do something else. It's really that time when things are subtle. Hmm. And things are are calm, and things are good. So clarity. When people always say, "When's the best time to look for a job?" Okay. Well, you got a good job. <laughs> I've always said to every person I've ever hired or ever worked for me in some form or fashion, that first day, what's the next thing that you want to do? Because I want to help you to get to that next place. And if you can start to think that way, then you'll realize again that you're going to follow your passion, follow whatever it is that you're interested in. Just follow it exactly. That's what you want to do. And so when you, when you say when is the right time, when things are going well and, and, you're, and you're comfortable and you say, hey, you know what? Five years from now, I want to be at this place. Ten years from now, I want to be at that place. This is how I see myself 20 years from now. 
And when you can start to visualize it and write it out, then you can start to say, you know, I'm going to start, start to build a plan to get there. So that's what I really hope that many of your uh, listeners and folks listening online can realize that you can do that now. And, you know, there are offices, I have another shameless plug, I used to work at the SBA, but you can go to the SBA office, you can go to the small business development centers in your respective communities, you can go to the SCORE chapters, um, you can go to our HBCUs uh, that actually work with our youth and also work with seasoned entrepreneurs as well, too, uh, and figure out ways of how to get to that next place. And so, um, at our office in Atlanta, um, and, and even, I must say, at Georgia State University, there are places that you can actually go to and figure out how to get to this next place. And so I would definitely encourage many of uh, your, your listeners and watchers to go to those places that they may not have thought about. Uh, and, and, and I always say start with your local government office. Sure. Yes. Now, and clearly from the seat, we always like, go to our entrepreneurship centers. There's 14 of them. One <laughs> is in Atlanta, and right. it's doing quite well. Yes. Um, was there, you talk about honing in your passion and purpose and, you know, how do you know when that is kind of cross? Like, you know, are you really, do they cross? Are they the same passion and purpose? Um, or do you sometimes have to do a little give and take? I'm curious of, you know, how do you kind of meld that in? So I'll break it down for you this way. Um, you know, you, you figure in, I think it was 06, 07, uh, I saw then Senator Obama give this speech that just inspired me so much. And, you know, I, I was prayerful at that time, and I was transitioning. I was trying to figure out my passion at that stage of my life. This was over 10 years ago. And, and I went into my prayer, and I was like, Lord, just guide me to this place. Take me to the place where I want to be because I, I aspire to be in this circumference of that individual. A couple of years later, I had an opportunity to meet then Senator Obama when he came to the South. And I got a chance to talk with him and learn about his experiences. Not to go into that to, to the details of that moving forward, mm -hmm. but a couple of years later, as you, I was appointed into this role, into that role as regional administrator for the U.S. Small Business Administration. And it's something I, I, I take fondly. So my point is, is that, you know, your passion is your purpose. In other words, whatever you're passionate about, Jody, that's your purpose in life. People run from it all the time. I was just speaking to a client the other day who's in California, who's in, in, uh, in real estate today, doing very well, and looking to take her business to the next level. And she, and she said, you know what? My family wanted me to be a physician. I went to med school, and, and I graduated, just was not happy about it. I want to go do real estate. She did real estate. She got involved with it. Now she's doing very well. My point is that your passion is your purpose. That's your purpose in life. So your passion is your purpose, and your purpose is your plan. Your plan is to build a plan around whatever it is that you're passionate about. And, and it doesn't mean because you're a millennial or you're, you're, you're a little bit young, you cannot achieve these things. My mentee in, in Georgia, Eldridge Washington, is a millennial. He is, he is killing it. He's doing very well. He's one of like his fifth company. He's your mentor, right? Well, yeah. You go to him for tech advice. I, I do. I go to him for tech advice because I don't know how to work these computers. <laughs> but I will say that, and my brother too, um, but I will say that um, even for seasoned professionals, it's never too late to realize your dreams. And that's self-actualization. It's when you can get to the point in life and realize what it is that you're passionate about. And once you do that, it's really, that's when you know these things, they come right. So build a plan around everything that you're passionate about. Uh, I, have to, I have to also say that my brother is one of those persons who's climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, has rode camels with King Abdullah, and I'm not making this up, uh, who does deep sea water scuba diving, uh, and also works for a great company based out of uh, California, where they actually do K-12 equity training in school mm -hmm. systems. I mean, he's got passions that he's yeah. been in love with for years. And I'm inspired when I see him go do what he does every single day. So that's what I mean by uh, bringing people around your circle where you can see these things. It may not be what you do, um, you know, but it, it may inspire you to do what you're actually destined to do. Yeah, no, I always say that um, if you are really living and I'm kind of in this Oprah-esque way that your passion and your paycheck will be. <laughs> because often yes. people are being pushed by their passion or pushed by a paycheck, right? right? Making that kind of decision. 
but if they can actually meet, if they can meet your passion and purpose and your paycheck, those three things together will, you know, and I always, I say always go for passion over the paycheck yes. because the money will come. Um, yes. You know, I have eaten and still some days today, I don't know if I'm, you know, ramening or if I'm going <laughs> to be at a five-star <laughs> restaurant, depending on who I'm meeting. Right. Um, so, but to take that risk. And I was going to ask on your path, um, were there ever a time, was there ever a time where you felt like you weren't ready to take on something that was being offered? You know, yes. so that, if that Obama opportunity came and you didn't really see it for you, because I think sometimes too many of us miss opportunities by holding on to something that's not so good for us. Yes. You know, where you, where you said the calmness, you've gotten the comfortable and you're like, oh, this opportunity comes, but can I take this now? Is it going to like... You know, so have you ever had one of those yourself? And, and to kind of also talk about maybe, you know, that's that risk taking or you know, just just wondering if there's have, something you should be doing. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because um, I have it every day. Okay. Um, if I could tell you every time when I was in corporate America and I quit my job and went back to graduate school, people say, oh, you should, you need to keep your good job. You know how hard it is to get a job, you know, or, or folks who said, oh, you're going to go into government. You shouldn't go into government. There's no money in government. You shouldn't. Or when I left the current administration, or the, or the Obama administration, uh, when our we came to our sunset, sunset period, and I didn't go straight to corporate. Oh, you should just go, dude. Don't. I had an, I had an interest. My interest was me. My interest was believing in in, in myself. Um, there, there's a there's a there's a song that came out every day. I play it in my head every day when I wake up. And, and it's uh, really and, and it's and it's, and it's by George Benson. Okay. Um, when I was a kid, I had the opportunity to really get some, have some really good relationships, and, uh, and my family did as well too. And I learned it. It was the title track of the Muhammad Ali story, hmm. and it's called "The Greatest Love of All." And no, Whitney Houston is not the person who wrote it. George Benson was, right. but the song talks about loving yourself is the greatest of, of love of all. You know, and what it talks about, you know, when you will have self doubt almost every day, and people will come to you to try to knock you down, envy, jealousy, you know, people, haters, let's just call them for what they are, you know, <laughs> I, and they will come. And people who <laughs> do not how to move their own ego out the way. And then right. sometimes you'll walk away thinking, well, maybe I'm not good enough, or maybe this is not the time, or perhaps, you know, I should just stay where I am. Uh, but that's what the enemy wants you to do. And you have to believe in yourself, and you have to believe in your faith, that your faith will take you over everything. Every single day, Jody, it is my walk, it is my thought, and it is my prayer. And I say this to myself every day when I wake up. And every day is, is not always a great day. But if I can get through that day knowing that I believe in myself, knowing that my family believes in me, knowing that my loved ones uh, believe in something greater than myself as an individual and there's a higher calling, I believe there's a higher calling for every single person out there. And you've got to find a way to believe in yourself and believe that you are here for a reason. You can't treat people, you know, like they're second class. Um, there are people I've met along the way who were less seasoned than me, uh, who were less experienced than me. And I always say, you know, one day I might not wind up end up working for you. And I treat everyone the same way. I've always spent more time with the admins and the secretaries and security cards who let me into buildings more than I have with the C-suite folks. I've always been that way. And I would encourage many people to realize that People like that matter in this crazy world, the way that things happen in an ordained fashion. Um, you'll find out that, you know, that's part of the master plan. So you're being tested every single day. You're no greater than the person who let you in the building this morning. And I believe in having that humility and walking with a sense of confidence along the way. You will certainly find that you are the exception to the rule. Every single person. So, you know, I, I didn't mean to go into that too oh, far. Oh, no, that's, but that's good. That's, people need to see the passion. Yeah. Um, but that's the other thing. People think of trailblazers. I think of you, like I said, when you, you know, in the intro that you're someone who, trailblazers are strong and powerful and, you know, but is there anything that scares you? Is there anything that, like, uh, that, you know, not an everyday scare or something that keeps you up, but, but is, there, is there stuff that scares you? <laughs> You know, Career-wise, I mean, I'm sure there's other things, but especially speaking. <laughs> I, I think probably, um, if I have to say, the one thing that scares me 
is is failure. Um, and what I mean by failure, um, I never want to be in a place to say that I didn't try or I didn't give my best. Um, I believe that you know one of our great historians, great presidents of Morehouse College, said that you know uh, sin. It is a sin to aim low. And, and, and when you literally aim low with any expectations that you have for yourself, it's, it's actually a sin. You are supposed to aim high. You're supposed to aim for the stars and beyond the stars. And so I'm afraid that sometimes I may not aim too high or I won't reach yeah. that place. Or you're not aiming high enough. Or I'm not aiming high enough, yeah. yeah. And... and um, you know, whenever I think that I'm I'm not, I, I I get a little kick in the kick in the butt, you know. But is it and the idea when you say that too, you're saying that you won't reach your goals, which is also attached to other people because you're investing in others, right? So right. if you only aim, you know, so high, right? You go for the stars, but you're really only shooting for the moon, and then you miss the moon, and where are you falling? That there's other people that you feel that you're gonna. Is that more the fear? Is that the versus fear for yourself that doesn't like. So the scared part is if you don't aim high enough, then others won't. Or well, I think I I, I have a huge a huge um, passion for seeing other people excel, and and I believe that I, I'm put on this earth to actually help other people to achieve their entrepreneurial dreams, their faith dreams, uh, their um, dreams of realizing who they are. Uh, realizing uh, who they can be and the effect that they have on other people. And so, you know, uh, I just believe that if I'm not doing that every day, then I'm shorting someone else's uh, journey. And sometimes that's a tough pill to swallow because you, you actually sacrifice your own dreams with yourself in doing it sometimes. And I've done that many times before. I regret some of them at different points in time in my life. But through wisdom and through uh, years I've learned to move on, and le and I'm still learning to move on. You know, I'm still learning to move past not achieving certain things that I wanted to accomplish in life today. And uh, it's a tough pill to swallow, but uh, I find out that, like I often say, that the cup is half full instead of half empty. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. as trailblazers, leaders definitely are some of our biggest readers and our listeners are always interested in knowing what do you read besides your own book. Um, <laughs> they didn't say that. I'm saying that. Um, you know, what are you currently reading and then what would you suggest that others read um, to make put themselves on the trailblazing path? You, you, you know, there there is... Um... I was trying to get the specific name, but I, I tell you this: I just got, uh, I just got, a, a, I just got it into a book that's actually coming. Out. I got a little pre-order copy of it. Uh oh, pre-order! Uh, uh, it's, it's coming big, out. It's coming out. And it's not mine, but it's actually, it's actually two, two folks who are doing some really great things. Uh, Rodney Bullard, who actually runs the Chick Fil A Foundation mm -hmm. in Atlanta, Georgia, has a great book that's coming out now, and uh, we've talked about it many times. It's called The Heroes, really. Realizing the heroes that you have in your life, and and I and I believe that Rodney is someone who is uh, who is continuing to make some pretty uh, substantial uh, trailblazing paths for other people. Uh, he's a good friend. Um, we are classmates from Leadership Atlanta, and I would be re remiss if I, I didn't mention uh, the board that I serve in Operation Hope. John Hope Bryan has served uh, many folks for many years, uh, as you know, uh, and he has a new book out called The Memo. And so, uh, you know, that's what I'm reading now. And, you know, I, I'm actually still rereading my own. <laughs> so uh, working on the next phase of the next book that's actually coming out. And um, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, there is a book that I must say out of Philadelphia that I'm looking to get uh, by an old neighbor of mine, uh, Jerry Mefford, who's now Jerry Riley. She has a book that come out, comes out. It's a children's book, actually. And it's, it says, uh, the title, I believe, is uh, Why Doesn't Grandma Remember Me? And it talks about children dealing with their grandparents and Alzheimer's. Which is important to me. And, and, and I, you and, saved yourself because yeah. Yeah, I was hearing only three male you know, oh, authors. No. So, you no, know, no. Go, no. go, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry. That's right. That's right. So, so I'm, 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 I'm excited about all of them. 
but that's a nice balance too. A children's yes. book, a little inspirational book, yes. kind of a poverty focused book and where you sit kind of makes sense that you need to kind of keep them juggling. Do you finish book by book or do you kind of kick a little bit up? I, I, I do it like um like we watch television episodes. Like okay. Monday, Wednesday, let's say you know you may watch <laughs> This show, that show, that's what I actually read them along the way. I uh, just finished uh, How to Make Millionaire Moves by Dr. William Bacard. My, 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 my mentor. Yes, yes, yes. And so that was, that was great. But I, I, I find out when you do it that way, you know, you keep the suspense going of what's going to take place. And so, yeah. Okay. yeah. Little cliffhangers. Just a little bit. Yeah. Um, what about in terms of, you did talk about being one of your fears is, is failure. Right. So even though you're a trailblazer, you've made some mistakes. What so far do you think has been your biggest mistake? Hmm. So far, because you still have lots to go. I just want you to know your, your journey's not over. <laughs> but, you know. Uh, let's see. What is my biggest mistake today? So today, yeah. Uh, um, Career move wise. Like, no, thank you for clarifying. I know I saw your face. So yeah. Was, okay. Yeah, no. uh, um, Not that you took the wrong subway down here. Yeah. You know, no, I, <laughs> I probably would say, um, career move. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't mean to sound like a cliche. There hasn't been any mistakes. Uh, I don't mean to start to talk about my, uh, my, my family history in, in, in the seminary ways, but there are no histories. And there, 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 there are no mistakes. When you look at your career moves, and each person who's in a place, I believe that everything that we do is ordained. I really believe that. I believe that sometimes you're not led down the wrong path. I think that we have the, the will to make decisions, and we make those decisions. I think that sometimes that you have to believe that it is the right move for you and only you at that time. Your best friend, your better half, your wife, your husband can tell you, no, you shouldn't do this, or I don't think you should do that, and that doubt comes up. But no one can tell you what's in here, right? So, I, I, again, I can't tell you how many people say, oh, you should do this, oh, you should do that, you should. Uh, if, uh, but what's in here, uh, you know, which I believe we have two best friends. I know I have two best friends. It's called Grace and Mercy. <laughs> and they have followed me all the days of my life. And so the best career move, is the one that you do not pursue. When you choose not to pursue what you're really, really interested in, you're going to always regret, I wish I could have, should have. But I'm, I'm always encouraged when I see people stepping on that, 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 that plank and taking that leap of faith and going into that place that most people say, I, I wouldn't go there. I'm going to stay here in my good place. I can tell you stories about people who would talk about, you should keep your good government job at, mm -hmm. at, 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 at HUD at that time because you're a civilian now. You should you know, stay here. And I said, well, you know what I don't want to do? is look back after 35 years and say, I wish I could have, should have did something else. And that's not to say that what they did were bad moves. That's good for them. For them. But for me, my mother would tell you, I've always had about three or four jobs at one time. I've always uh, have been in a place where I'm, I'm speaking and trying to um, instill inspiration in someone else's life because I'm always thinking that I always get something back out of it. So, no, there is no bad moves from a career point of view. And... The one thing I do admire about you, because I feel like I'm also a degree collector, is um, they're curious as to, and our audience, because we, we go back and forth on a debate about how much does formal education really play sure. in one's career. You know, you see the, you know, the, the one-offs, as I call them, yeah. who, you know, so-and-so is definitely making more money than you and I right now and living lavishly, so we think, right. at least that's what we see on social media. Right. But how do you think um, having formal education has really helped your, you know, frame your career because you've gone back at different times, you've gone to different institutions, mm -hmm. and how did that lead you to today? And then we'll start to wrap it up, and yeah. I want some words of advice before you go. I have a couple of questions. No, no, and, and it's a great question. You know, I was coming out of high school playing football. You know, I, I was, I was, a, I was a running back. You know, I was, <laughs> I was pretty good. I got hit in practice, hairline fracture, sitting up, looking at the sky, wondering what am I going to do next. I thought I was going off to college playing at University of North Carolina playing football. Um, football. It didn't happen for me that way. Some kind of way, you know, I started to find my place myself at, at Morehouse College, eventually graduating and saying, hey, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. So I'm a graduate of Morehouse College. Um, uh, when what did you major in? I majored in psychology. 
industrial organizational psychology. I wanted to figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. Um, I think that Morehouse is, is a great place to help me to get to where I am today at looking back on it. Um, it wasn't always easy, um, but, you know, I think it, it helped me to get to where I am today. Uh, when, when you look at uh, Morehouse, one of its greatest presidents, uh, Benjamin Elijah Mays, who actually was the one who actually quoted, speaking of when you aim low, that's actually mm -hmm. saying, you know, he's not a Morehouse man. He actually went to college in, in South Carolina. So I don't want to say Morehouse is the all to be all. It's just a place where it is. Our current president, Dr. Thomas, uh, is an Ivy League grad. He's our current president. We're happy to have him. I'm saying that to say that sometimes, and Clark Atlanta University was my graduate school. I uh, majored in urban administration with a concentration of public, a public administration with a concentration of urban administration. Served as class president. Um, okay. it, believe me, uh, but but it was a great experience. And I received a certificate of grant writing from Henry University's Life Learning Institute. Um, but then I want to I want to be specific about something, Jody. Um, those have been all good paths for me. Uh, I know folks and people, folks who I, I mentor that started off in college and said, you know what, it's not for me. Um, I have mentees who are just like, you know, their brain is so far ahead of where the classroom. it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, one of my mentees has started like five companies has done well. So, you know, what they've done is surround themselves with the technical opportunities to learn their craft. And so sometimes that could come from uh, a technical institution that could come from the military which have tr uh, great training programs in the military. Uh, and to talk about leadership, mil the military can actually show you that. I'm not an advocate of any one of those, in, 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 uh, but by chance, but I'm, what I'm saying is that the path is right for that individual. But what something is consistent across the board is following your passion wherever it is. So today you've been here to inspire us. And I'd like to know who inspires you. Because as trailblazers, as you fly high, right? The eagles right. are high, you're up there by, there's, there's not so many of you. So who do you look to? Who inspires you? Minus family, minus our usuals, but, up, you know, there's someone who kind of, you know, is your mentor from afar, not that you see them regularly, or you, you know. Yeah, so besides family and friends and loved ones, who would I kind of see as something who's kind of mentored me from afar? Um, you know, you know, um, I don't. I, I really don't mean to sound like a cliche, and you know, I say a lot of corny sayings, but I know, but I like it. <laughs> but they're real to me. Um, my faith, uh, my consistency of 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 my faith, uh, in most terms, most people will recognize that as God. That is my inspiration. Someone who I've never seen, I've never touched but I feel God every single day in everything that I do. And, um, you know, I had to say I don't want to sound corny, but that's, I really believe that. I really believe that my faith, you know, that which had created me and all of us, in my, my opinion, in my opinion, I, you know, even for people who don't believe in God, you got to believe in yourself, right? If you believe in yourself, Someone created you, whoever you believe that is, that's who I believe in. And so people, human beings will fail you. Your faith will never fail you. Your belief in your faith will always be there no matter how much you mess up, no matter what road you go down, which is the wrong road, or whatever mistakes you may make. Forgiveness from the highest level cannot be obtained in a humanistic point of view. And so I believe that, you know, who do I admire, who do I look to? I believe in the one that is perfect. I believe in the one that, that, that is exceptional in everything that God does, which is not a he or she, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Uh, but that is something that's never steered me in, in, in a wrong place. And, so, and that's perfect. I mean, yeah. who, who inspires you is who inspires you. Yeah. Um, and everyone should find that in themselves, yeah. whatever and whoever or whatever. It can be a thing. Um, and it can change depending on where you are in life, um, what inspires you. So I think that's always important to know that it's not just one place. And I really want to thank you today on behalf of the National Urban League, myself, yeah. and the Urban League's Job Network for joining us for the Digital Career Success Series. Thank we you. do have a Facebook Live coming up on February 21st. 
And then we'll be hearing from the C-suite later in the month um, to make sure that you kind of, we bring the C-suite down to you. I won't tell you who our guest is quite yet, um, but please listen in. Please connect with uh, Cassius on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you can find him. Um, he's speaking somewhere, everywhere, um, and is involved in so many organizations that if you can't find him, you don't want to find him. And uh, so once again, thank you for joining us. I hope everyone today got a lot out of this. And we're also um, promoting a new program that um, the National Urban League is involved in. And luckily, I went to two of your schools this week yeah. to promote the Future Housing Leaders, which is a partnership between National Urban League, Fannie Mae, and 15 plus other organizations like Wells Fargo, CBRE, Arbor, uh, Regions Bank, we did a special thing at Clark Atlanta the yeah. other night, to really infuse our folks into the housing, um, administ like not just administration and not yeah. housing as in terms of projects, but housing in terms of mortgage lending. You mentioned your girlfriend um, in California who followed her passion for real estate, that we're not owning enough Oh, that, of our home. That was my best friend's girlfriend. Okay. Yeah, so, there you go. No, I don't mean like girlfriend. I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, but just making sure that we are infused in that industry because yeah. we're not homeowners enough because I don't think we're also on the other side of the table. So we're trying to even the playing field and give people an opportunity to pay two year internship um, and not just the internship itself, but a lot of soft skills like the CCSS and other things that they'll get. So yes. hopefully you'll cross paths with us there as well. And um, those of you, please join us on the 21st. Um, we are looking forward and excited to hear how someone really changed his career from financial to the entertainment music industry. Uh, he took that risk that you were yes. talking about. Yes. And Dom is phenomenal. So please join us for Facebook Live on the 21st. And thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you again, Jody. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And I appreciate it. Thank you. You too. <laughs> right